It's a sweet success story spanning two countries. Yasushi Sasaki is a chef in Belgium. He moved there more than 30 years ago from Japan as a young adult. At the time, he couldn't speak a word of French, one of the official languages of Belgium, but Sasaki has conquered one of the unofficial foods of Belgium. Last month, a prestigious Belgian food guide named him Brussels Chocolatier of the Year. Sasaki calls chocolate his hobby, his job, his pleasure, his whole life. He's spent years subtly blending different flavors, some from Belgium and some from Japan, like green tea. And that led to the food guide calling him a flavor wizard, one who says he tries not to copy others, but to stick to his own way of making chocolate. He reportedly exports his delicacies back home to Japan. We would love for some to make a stop in Atlanta. I'm Carl Azus. It's great to see you this Wednesday. It means the world to us to have you watching the world from A to Z. A tragedy that struck yesterday in the U.S. state of Maryland could have ripple effects across the country in the days ahead. The U.S. government says a large container ship apparently lost power as it was approaching the Francis Scott Key Bridge early on Tuesday. The vessel reportedly issued a May Day, prompting authorities to stop additional cars from going onto the bridge before the ship hit a pillar that caused the structure to collapse into the Patapsco River. Most news reports said there were cars and trucks on the bridge at the time. In addition to at least eight construction workers, six of them were still missing when we produced this show. Government officials say the incident does not look like it was intentional, but it has closed the Port of Baltimore, which receives deliveries of construction equipment, sugar, coal, and more car and truck shipments than any other port in America. The Francis Scott Key Bridge is named for the American lawyer who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. It's more than one and a half miles long, and since it was opened in 1977, it's become a major transportation connection in the area of Baltimore, with more than 30,000 vehicles crossing it daily. Yesterday, President Joe Biden asked Congress to approve all the money needed to rebuild the bridge. It's one of the most iconic, powerful brands in the world, now worth more than two and a half trillion dollars. It sold more than a billion iPhones worldwide. And Apple's ability to maintain that hold on the marketplace has put it squarely in the crosshairs of the U.S. Justice Department. Justice filing a sweeping antitrust lawsuit against Apple, accusing the tech giant of illegally monopolizing the smartphone market. For consumers, that has meant fewer choices, higher prices and fees, lower quality smartphones, apps and accessories, and less innovation from Apple and its competitors. At the heart of the antitrust suit, the allegation that Apple has set up its own closed ecosystem that limits Apple users to only using Apple products. That's also known as the walled garden. At the center of the walled garden, the iPhone. And that's really, you know, the centerpiece of, of Apple's empire. It's, it's what ma has made it such a dominant company for so long. One example of unfair practices alleged by the Justice Department, that Apple degrades the texts that iPhones receive from Android phones, those green texts iPhones get from non-iPhones. The Justice Department says that messages that are sent between iPhones are more secure because they're encrypted. But when you're messaging with a non-iPhone user, that those messages are not encrypted and thus less secure. Also a difference in picture quality. A picture sent from an Android to an iPhone could be of lesser quality? Yeah, according to the Justice Department, uh, when those messages or images get exchanged, the quality is less, uh, you know, images might look grainier, videos might look grainier. Another example of what the Justice Department calls Apple's, quote, exclusionary conduct. These days, good luck trying to use anything but Apple Pay if you're using your phone at the checkout counter. Apple has blocked third-party developers from creating competing digital wallets on the iPhone. And Justice says Apple Watches only work well with iPhones, forcing owners to buy nothing but Apple phones. The Justice Department says unlocking more competition for Apple products will lead to more innovation and lower prices for consumers. On the other hand, Apple says, look, if, you, if the Justice Department gets its way, um, then that effectively makes Apple devices much more like Android devices and consumers don't want that. 
And that's a key part of Apple's argument. It says the lawsuit threatens what sets its company apart in fiercely competitive markets. It also says that if the government's case is successful, it'll prevent Apple from creating the kind of technology where the company's hardware, software, and services connect. Apple plans to, quote, vigorously defend itself in court, but one thing to keep in mind about lawsuits like this is that they can take years to play out, so don't expect a resolution anytime soon unless the suit is settled, withdrawn by the government, or dismissed by a judge. On this date in world history. The strongest earthquake ever in the United States struck on this date in 1964. The 9.2 magnitude tremor hit just southeast of Alaska's largest city, Anchorage, and caused a tsunami. More than 130 people died, damage was estimated at hundreds of millions of dollars, and the quake was detected in 47 U.S. states. On March 27, 1929, you could pick up the phone and call the president in the Oval Office. Well, if you had his number. Herbert Hoover was the first president to have a phone installed at his desk. They'd been in other rooms of the White House for 52 years, but it was only at Hoover's request that a phone was placed in his office. And this date in 1912 saw the planting of the first Japanese cherry trees along the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. Japan's government gave 3,000 of them as a friendship gift to the American people. A cherry blossom festival took root and continues today. World of knowledge. Which of these countries is ruled by a group that isn't recognized as a lawful government by any other country? Afghanistan, North Korea, Myanmar or Burma, Haiti. According to the CIA World Factbook, no other countries have formally recognized the ruling Taliban as the official government of Afghanistan. Nearly 30 young girls are gathered in this small room, each learning different subjects, from science and math to drawing and tailoring. But it's all done in secret, because what they're doing is illegal. It's been two years since the Taliban regained control of Afghanistan and continues to repress women. The extreme Islamic group has outlawed females from many public places, jobs, and schooling beyond the sixth grade. Disobedience could mean prison or worse. But some women are daring to gather in secret for the opportunity to get an education. I've told myself that even if the Taliban arrests me, I will stand up and tell them I don't want to be kept at home. I just want to learn, and that is not a crime. Activist Parasto Hakim is the founder of Sirak Schools. It operates nine secret classrooms across Afghanistan's eight provinces. With the help from 150 brave teachers and staff, more than 400 women are able to attend. But women will only hear about this opportunity by word of mouth. Each school's location remains secret, as well as the identity of every student, teacher, and staff member. Revealing anything could put everyone involved at risk. Afghanistan is fully shattered. It is in darkness. But these classrooms are making a difference. The school is a light for me. It's like a road for me that I can see happiness and sunrise at the end of it. There is a power stronger than fear, our hope for the future. How'd you like to catch a Gulf Breeze with us today, y'all? We're swimming with the dolphins at Gulf Breeze High School. Miss Lucido's class is watching from the city of Gulf Breeze in the Sunshine State of Florida. And just a few states north, we come to the Tar Heel State of North Carolina. That's where our friends at Kernersville Middle School are watching. Great to see the Hawks flying high in Mrs. Lindbergh's class in Kernersville. If you like dressing up your dog to the canines, this fashion show is for you. It reportedly features new design collections from 20 pet brands, and it recently brought people, animals, and haute couture together for a three-day show in the Chinese city of Shanghai. The nation's market for pet products is exploding as pets become more popular in China and are increasingly treated as part of the family. In fact, one resident who attended this event says the cost of accessories doesn't matter as much as making your pet look good. What an opportunity for high fashion houses. Think Louis Bichon, 
Hyper Bavarian, Cole Hanover, Dolce and Gabasset, Eddie Boxer, Giorgio Armongrel, Ferragaucho, Sheepdog, Hugo Boston Terrier, Gucci Wawa, Jimmy Chow Chow, Carl Lossefeld, Michael Corsican, Prod Dachshund, Oscar De La Rat Terrier, Ralph Lerottweiler, Reboxer, and Steve Madingo, to name a few. What better way to make a dog look foxy on the catwalk? I'm Carl Azus for the world from A to Z.